Defending a fortress from a siege or semi-mega beast is, in my opinion, one of the easiest things to do in Dwarf Fortress. If you have no soldiers, you can lock your doors, raise your bridges, and either kill your enemies with traps, or just wait them out. And if you have a well-trained militia or two, you can destroy just about any attackers by taking them on directly, or luring them into an ambush. Either way, there isn't a ton of tension to be felt during most attempted invasions. Which is why I decided to bring some siege excitement back into my life by building a fortress where the safety of my civilians was dependent on a single soldier, rather than a bridge or an army. While this might initially sound ridiculous, well-trained, well-armored soldiers in Dwarf Fortress are basically tiny terminators, so pitting one dwarf against the world is really just a fair fight. As I prepared to embark to my new fortress, I picked out the least useful of my seven stock starting dwarves, my third minor Dastot, as a candidate to be the fortress's resident super soldier. I could only make her so skilled and equip her so well with the points I had remaining, but I hoped that she could learn all the other important parts of soldiering I couldn't plant in her brain on the job. At first, as we set up the basic layout of our outpost and started working on a farm in the cavern, she seemed like she might be able to grow into the job. Sure, she was as slow as molasses as she slogged through the fortress in a set of armor she had no training in, but she still killed the giant cave toad she was targeting before it managed to completely kill the miner it was battering. And, when an extremely timid Dreltha started lingering a little too close to where some of my dwarves were working, she was fully capable of standing near it and scaring it away. But, as the fortress grew from an outpost to a hamlet, and a hamlet to a village, the non-stop training I had scheduled for her, and the memories of death she had on her mind, began to weigh on her. Her mood dropped, even as her armor was upgraded and I started giving her the occasional month off. All she wanted to do in her free time was yell at the mayor and get sad drunk in the tavern. As we approached the point where sieges would start being an issue we would have to deal with, I had to make a decision. Promote Dastot from Candidate Super Soldier to Super Soldier in Residence, even as she spiraled towards depression, or pivot to an actually legendary military dwarf I had stumbled upon in one of my dormitories, Rukast, who had served as an axe lord in my sober soldiers militia 18 years prior in my non-alcoholic fortress. It wasn't really much of a decision. So I granted Dastot a permanent mental health break from the role of militia commander, got my dwarves to forge a new steel axe for Rukast, and waited for the one soldier challenge to really begin with the arrival of our first siege. Fortunately, the goblins didn't leave me waiting too long. Within a year of the switch, our fortress had grown into a town, and had become enough of a target that the goblins sent a group of archers along with their regularly scheduled child snatchers in an effort to take us out. Unfortunately for them, while goblin bowmen are pretty bad at the best of times, the snaking hallways at the entrance to my fortress made it nearly impossible for them to get shots off at Rukast. This process was repeated a couple times while the fortress was in the town stage, with each goblin siege learning no lessons from the one that came before and falling victim to Rukast's axe. But as our town grew into a city, the threats grew too. For the first time, we had semi mega beasts to deal with, and the goblin sieges started getting bigger and more difficult to manage which eventually led to the arrival of the 7th Goblin Siege, which came packed with dozens of goblins, armed with melee weapons for the first time, as well as 20 or so beak dogs. This was a threat on a different scale from everything that had come before. For the first time, I wasn't confident our one soldier would be enough to protect the fortress. So, with a little bit of apprehension, I denied their parlay request and waited to see what would happen. At first, everything seemed to be going well, the horde of invaders was being thinned out by the one tile wide hallways that led from the surface down to the fortress, so they were trickling into a cusp's barracks area in dribs and drabs. But as each new enemy came down the stairs, her cusp was lured a little further away from safety and a little closer to the mass of enemies approaching from the hallway above. Once her fighting took her up the staircase and into the hallway, it wasn't long before she found herself surrounded, and with an injury mood bubble above her head. Despite her injury, she fought her way out of being surrounded and then continued down the hall killing what was left of the siege. But once the last goblin was dead, she stopped moving. It turned out that both of her feet had been injured in the fight because she was still refusing to wear steel boots for some reason. 
but that was the only injury she was dealing with. So after a short stay in the hospital and a renewed effort to get her to wear her full armor set, she was back in her barracks doing better than ever. With her first proper siege siege taken care of, the fortress continued to grow and reach new heights by becoming both a metropolis and the capital of our very own barony. But with great power comes an even bigger target on your back. And so within six months of the last siege, the goblins were back and in greater numbers than ever before. With over a hundred goblins milling around on the surface, this battle seemed like it had an inevitable conclusion. But for some reason, when I denied their request to parlay, they didn't have any interest in actually attacking my fortress. Days turned to weeks, and weeks turned to months, while the goblins harmlessly wandered around the surface of my territory, and Rakust stayed stationed in the entrance barracks. I was more than prepared for a long-term standoff, but apparently the goblins were not, because when autumn arrived and the leaves started falling, they hit the road. Something about this siege that wasn't must have fried the brains of my goblin enemies, because for the next three years, they sent only tiny archer sieges to get me, even as our wealth increased and our noble was promoted, first to a count and then to a duke. I knew this lack of attention couldn't last forever though, and when my civilization's king arrived at my fortress, making it the capital, I knew trouble would be soon to follow. And sure enough, the largest goblin army of the run was soon standing on my surface. I denied their parlay request, hoped that they would wander aimlessly once again, and then knew everything was over once they started making their way down the tunnels and towards the fortress. Rakust put up a good fight, bringing her total number of kills in defense of the fortress well over 100, but when she was drawn up the stairs by enemies and was surrounded, there was only so much she could do. As the fight wore on and her martial trance wore off, exhaustion finally overtook her and she died, leaving the fortress open to the goblins. Some of my citizens who had been soldiers in past lives and past fortresses managed to put up a fight even while unarmored and empty handed, but the sheer size of the goblin army was too much to bear. Little by little, the goblins chipped away at the population of my fortress until I eventually had to declare defeat. We had gone from a humble outpost of seven dwarves, to the metropolitan capital city of my civilization, to nothing. All because we only had a single soldier. So if you're looking to combine fun, in the dwarf fortress sense of the word, with fun in the regular sense, a single soldier may be all you need. Thanks for watching, an extra thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.